Brendan Mitchell is a comic book artist and a storyteller, and he's also First Nations. As he shares his story, listen for how he pays attention to the fine differentiation between his culture and white culture, or mainstream culture, and how it has impacted his life. Powerful story, wonderful sharing, hope you enjoy. And the, the funny part was, I remember, uh, and I was writing the script for the third issue, I got a phone call, and it was uh, Adam Beach who called me. The, and uh, I was like, uh, he's like, hey, uh, it's Adam. I'm like, yeah, Adam who? Like, Adam Beach. Get the hell out of here. No way. Okay, like, te teach me who is Oh, Adam Beach, uh, he's an actor. Okay. Yeah, he was on... Uh, oh, he was briefly on Suicide Squad. Okay. <laughs> he was on uh, uh, Wind Talkers. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Flags of Our Fathers. Okay. Yeah. So. So it blew you away a little bit. Well, yeah, it blew me away. I I, I knew his previous work at the time. And uh, yeah, when he called me up, he was just like, yeah, I got this idea and I've seen your book and it's really great. And and I was like, uh, you're, you're pulling my leg. No, it's <laughs> like, no, it's really me. Like, And I was like, oh, and after a while, I was like, okay, wow. And it's like. Really? And so it was really one of those things where, yeah, I was starstruck and I was like really taken, not taken back, but I was like, uh, I was like, wow, what can we do or what, you know, um, uh, what do you want to do? Um, but then it was just one of those things where like the, we had a couple of phone calls and we, had, we met one, he was living in Ottawa at the time, saw him and then he was doing some other like TV work and stuff. And I was like, okay, I'll, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. But it was really, it was a really great conversation. It was really great uh, meeting with him and talking to him. Um, but yeah, like I said, word spread because I did a lot of the promotion online. Uh, this was before Facebook or Twitter, uh, mm -hmm. even before MySpace. And I b developed a little small following. And when I actually was able to release the book, um, I had people in like overseas asking for a copy in uh, South America states it was really i think managed to sell eight thousand copies on our on my own so it was a really great accomplishment did, uh, did anyone in the media catch that oh yeah no i had i, I was caught aptn did a story i think cbc did a story at the time good no oh, excuse me um and it was really like it was really one of those whirlwinds right but once again too i was just like no one else had no like i was trying to find people that were doing the same thing and Nobody was doing it yet, and I do. But I do remember um, after the book was out, uh, Jay Ojic, uh, he contacted, he approached me, and he was like, "This is amazing," and he showed me what he was doing. I was like, "Wow, your book is awesome!" Like it was the the Raven. It was a really great book, um, and it was just. But it was like one of those things where it was like everything was kind of happening really fast or or really slow, and I didn't know how to. Uh, get them all to gel together or like, what do we do next? Yep. Right. Like it was, it was one of those weird, like, what do we do next to get to the next stage? And, uh, and it just got to the point where I was like, okay, like I said, I got to focus on my family and I'm going to do that. And I'll, I'll come back to it. Yeah. Uh, because doing self publishing is expensive. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. Because you did this on your own because no one could catch what you were trying to do. Trying, Cause yeah. you're, you're a first. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and the great thing about being first is that uh, everyone learns from my mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that, and and you did all of this out of out of New Brunswick. Uh, yes and no. Like, uh, like uh, I had uh, friends from school that I went with, uh, or that I graduated with, and uh, I was like, look, I can't do this by myself. Hmm. Um, here's the idea. Here's the concept. What do you guys think? And they were like, we love it. Let's, you know, when, uh, if you need any help, then let's get it going. So when I first made that proposal and versus when I finally got the money to get this off the ground, there was like a good two year period and I was lucky that everyone was still interested in not doing anything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, the learning, the learning experience was, uh, at the time was trying to, uh, self publish and without any real help yeah. minus the, the funding I got from the, uh, feds. Um, Great. Part of why I ask is that one of the narratives in New Brunswick today 
is young people staying here and making their careers here and finding their way. And, and many of the people I get to interview are trailblazers. They're doing something that no one's done before. They're trying to figure out how to fit criteria to get funding, but they know in their heart, I need to do it this way because that's where the breakthrough will occur. And your story sounds like it was about 10 or 15 years ahead of the current curve <laughs> of that same behavior in a medium that most people don't even take as a, maybe take it seriously because comic book culture is very powerful. Storytelling is beyond, you know, it, it's, it, it's core to almost everything we do, but we, we're just some people are just starting to wake up to the power of storytelling now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that, and that's the thing too. Like, um, because I was trying to break through the barrier. Like I said, the the parameters are pretty clear when I was writing the book. It's like it's not a superhero book. It's not going to be. Uh, I'm going to get rid of any stereotypical imagery in there. I want to try and do this as uh, honestly as I possibly can. Um, those were my parameters, and I wanted something that. Uh, and native kids like kids in my community be proud of because like i said they were the ones that inspired me to do this and i didn't want to let them down yeah so even then they were there every time i got a drawing or a concept i was like what do you guys think what do you guys think and they're like we need to see more and i'm like okay if you guys like it then i'm doing something right <laughs> um but uh but yeah like i said we uh all, a lot of the things that i worked out of my home in listigich uh and the guys that helped me out they were from their home we just you know decent internet connection that's all we needed uh, so we were doing a lot of things that were like, yeah, we didn't, we, uh, my, the, the work, my work, my work schedule didn't fit the mold. The work, uh, it wasn't a traditional office space. It was really yeah. good, internet, good internet connection. You got the software. I got the, you know, we've got the tools. Yeah. Let's do it. Straight down. And just be able to communicate and be able to communicate consistently and we'll be, we'll, yeah. we'll get this work done both from there yeah so to move your your story a little bit forward the um children arrive and isn't there a stretch you lived in ottawa for a while yeah so yeah so it was one of those things like i said we were it was uh one of the things that uh we wanted to do when i found out i was going to be a, a father was i wanted to give them a different i wanted to give my son a different experience than what i grew up with and uh i and well, my wife and I were on the same page with that way of thinking, and uh, she had just came come. She had just come back from Ottawa before we got together, and uh, fast forward, we we're just like, okay, we need we need to make a change, hmm. and uh, it was really like it was a toss of a coin. It was heads Halifax, tails Ottawa, flip the coin. Ottawa won. Like it was that, that's how it was. We didn't really put a lot of thought into it. Mm -hmm. We were just like, okay, yeah. Oh, that was the, what, but it, what, um, inspired that move also too. is like, well, okay, I want to know more about the business side of things. So I'm going to go, oh, I'm going to go to business school. Yep. Shouldn't be that hard. It was. <laughs> Which, where did you go? Carlton? Carlton, yeah. Went, yeah, I went to Carlton, Ottawa, yeah. yeah. There were the, what they, but it was once again, it was like, they said yes, and uh, I was like, okay, well, they said yes. And they, uh, and so we were like, okay, that, that's what we're going to do. And we, we told ourselves, okay, it's just going to be four years tops. And four years turned into ten yeah. years. Yeah. Uh, when around that time, though, it was time to come back. And uh, we moved back in uh, 2014. Yeah. yeah. And, and what brought you back to New Brunswick and to Fredericton in particular? Uh was it work? Was it combination? No, of it wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, it was just. Uh, it was just time to come back. Like there was just uh, we, the drive to, I, I, over the time I realized how disconnected we were getting, huh. right, and it was time to come back home. We gave them that. It felt like we accomplished that foundation that we we gave them something that we didn't have, um, and it was time to bring them back home to show them what home has to offer. Uh, so, um, but at the same time too, it was just like, well, I also want to finish what we started because I didn't get a chance to finish the university yep. while I was there. I was so close and it was just a really good, and I was freelancing. So there's a whole bunch of factors. I was freelancing at a time, but yep. around that time it was really drying up because of the climate and, uh, the work just wasn't there. And I was like, well, okay. I'm going to go to school and I'm going to give this the old college try again. Yeah. And, uh, and and it was a little bit easier this time too because the kids were older uh, yeah. and uh, we both committed ourselves. We said, we're, we said we were going to give ourselves a strict two-year 
deadline mm -hmm. to uh, graduate. Uh, we exceeded that, and in our in in between that or after that, we're just kind of like, well, now what? Because we're just, like, I was uh, I was done one semester before my wife, and I was like, well, there's no one's really beating down my door for work, so I'm going to keep going to school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I went uh, and I went for uh, my master's in adult education. I had an opportunity there, and I'll be done. At the rate I'm going now, I'll be done at the end of summer. Great. Yeah. Great. Managing to blend all those pieces together is it's not simple. A lot of times mainstream media, when covering student life, will focus on tuition, sometimes talk about quality of life, sometimes talk about the difficulties in finding a job. But they don't blend like all the transitions that can happen over a five- or six-year period from marriage, children, moving, and all of them. All of those pieces that come into play. If you're willing, um, because you've touched on it lately through each of the different pieces. So you see the world and experience the world through a very particular lens. And, and the First Nations native lens, I'm hoping it one day has a larger role to play in some of the directions that our country needs to go in or province needs to go in. As simple as doing circle work in a community or understanding where we come from and how we got here. And, and you've lightly t touched on what that's like for you because you're <laughs> being very respectful, which is great. But if you're willing, <clears throat> could you share or teach us, um, here's an example of we could have done it this way instead of doing it that way. It, it, if that I, makes I, sense? It makes sense, but I, 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 think I, spot, I, I think I'm still trying to figure that out huh. because uh, there, there are, th like coming back, uh, coming back i knew what i was coming back to yeah because you're being very gentle but i suspect you're in the thick of it on on some major kind of themes or issues whether it's a, a university setting yeah and the need for changes and shifts or your social setting as you raise children getting them to be aware of all cultures but, it, well and that was the it was the culture shock okay, well the culture shock was going into the boiling pot that was ottawa hmm. so it was uh we all gelled together, but I did notice that it got to the point when we were in Ottawa, we weren't really talking about like, uh, if you're Indian or if you're native, don't say anything. Just you're part of the you're part of the you're part of the non-white kids. You're going to that group, and uh, and and when I I saw it, and I was just kind of like, ah. Uh, Okay, we guys keep talking about uh, equality and um, integration, and I was just kind of like, "But you guys are not really talking. No one's talking about our history, and if they're talking about our history, they're leaving a big chunk out." And uh, I think what what uh, shook us was when uh, and where I had to take a stand, where we both took a stand, was. Um, when our oldest son came back from a class and uh, we were, and he said, uh, yeah, we were learning about uh, native people today. And just the way he said it, I'm just like, you mean you're learning about us? No, no, no. Native people. And I was like, okay, we messed up somewhere. And it was, uh, and we, we were just, uh, I was like, yeah, that's us. I'm like, no, that's not us. And I was like, it, got, it was an argument right not just like this is who we are son like what did they talk about and um so that was uh that was a really tough pill to swallow and it was that was kind of like okay we got to come back home because they're what they're they're talking about us like we're not even here or if we are it's too it's it's only when they want to talk about it or when it's up, when it makes them feel good to talk about it, not when uh, ignoring the other larger issues at play. Uh, I was surprised I didn't talk about it during like uh, like I remember being on uh, Parliament Hill for the apology. I remember being uh, downtown once again uh, for I'll No More. You know, these were big significant things, and I was even just like, how how come no one's talking about this? Or like, you know, it got a lot of coverage, but then. When it was done, it was done, and I and I kind of saw it was gonna. I, I kind of saw 
that happening. And I was like, we're getting really great momentum here, guys. Like people are listening. And then I just, I just had this weird feeling in my stomach. I was like, okay, hey, it's going to be like the sound clip's going to be done and they're going to get their news beat and it's going to be on to the next thing. And sure enough, that's in my mind, that's what happened. Um, I mean, but I don't know is still online it's still, they're still, they still have a presence and it's just as vital now as it was back then. Um, but I guess, yeah, it was, it was really one of those things where, uh, this is what we're t- like, if they're not really, if this is how they're treating us in Ottawa, I'm pretty sure it's going to be just as bad or it hasn't really changed much here. And sure enough, like I was, just, but the weird thing is, is home is home. And I knew how to, I'd rather <laughs> the devil, you know, is better than the devil. You don't. So I was just kind of like, we're going back home. Okay, great. What about our kids? We'll, we're, <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, no, it was, it was really one of those things that I do. Like I said, a lot of things are coming back and, a lot of the the things I experienced growing up, I was like, "Oh man, maybe it's changed a little bit." And I mean, we moved the dial a little bit, but there was still like, I was just like, uh, "The gaps are still the there. gaps were still there." Uh, it was more, it was the the divide was still there, but that's just something that uh, growing up, I I I lived it, and I never really I saw it, but I didn't know what it what it looked like and as I got older I was like oh, okay it's still here like oh I know what it is now like yeah. you guys over there we'll stay over here don't bother us and we won't bother you hmm. and uh but I was like we we can't live like that in doing research for the show we did on Tappan Adney and the survival of the First Nations or native birch bark canoe um, there is a video clip somewhere on the internet that speaks to building the birch bark canoe and it's a collaborative project Mm -hmm. and the people speaking on behalf of the structure of it all like the leader of the project showed you know men and women first nations whites um, some other cultures mixed in and the key point he wanted to stress is we need to do it together not just sort of talk but the canoe isn't just about building a canoe it's a there's a whole connection to land history techniques as well as sharing of the construction process yep so I, I wanted to take that clip and get a million people <laughs> to, to watch it. it's like it's right all the clues and resources are right there in front of us but we need a behavior change yeah we need to, to do it uh, and i'm i'm sort of in the group that is sort of the root of the problem <laughs> Rather than the, the group that says, but we could be doing it this way instead of that way, which is, uh, so now you've moved back to New Brunswick, and if you're willing to wander into some of that, New Brunswick has several big issues that it needs to deal with from mining or pipelines and such, but still the root dynamic seems to be a, a disconnect in the relationship and communication with First Nations. Does this move through your world at all? Is that a fair question to go explore for a bit? Oh. Uh, I don't know how to really explore it. It's how would you like to see it resolved, or what would you see as a better process? It's it's listening, uh, like really listening to uh, what the community wants, um, and it, this goes beyond. Uh, think about it this way: if somebody in the neighborhood wanted to do something. Um, but instead of talking to the community, talking to the neighborhood, they just talked to the MLA. The MLA said, yep, do it. Didn't talk to anybody else here and goes ahead and does whatever project they want to do. Everyone, some people find out about it in the neighborhood and you're just like, oh, we didn't hear about this. We don't know. Like, what are you talking about? How come you didn't talk to me about this? You're going to be upset, right? Or you might be upset. Like, how come you didn't say anything or how, like... Oh, we already got approval. It's all good. Don't worry about it. You're going to like it. Uh, so, like, I try, like, look at it through that lens, right? Like, just because you went to, an, like, what is consent? What is uh, consulting? What is informing, right? Like,
Thank you for watching. Be good. Have fun. Love each other. The Dennis Report is an independent media production. To support the program, go to DennisAtchison.com and click Become My Patron on Patreon. Patreon.